All right, Tuesday's edition here of the vlog, Kalata and the Prince wrapping up today's show. Ed Ogeron was back with us. Uh, usually he would join us at 7.30 every Tuesday when we launch the show. Since he's been announced as the LSU defensive line coach, he's had some things come up in his schedule. So it's always good to catch up with him uh, when he stopped by back with us. Uh, he was a featured speaker last week at the Coach's Clinic. He really touched on that. And, again, you can just hear the passion for what he has in, in representing LSU. There's no question. I mean, it, it's it's every in everything that he does, you hear his the passion in his voice and wearing that purple and gold, speaking at the coaches' clinic, going out there every day and coaching. The best op, the the best story that we heard from him today, in my opinion, was the night before spring practice started. He couldn't sleep. He said he was like a little boy. He couldn't believe how how he's just so grateful for the opportunity. He was so excited for what he was going to be able to do the following day out there on the practice field. Those are the type of things where when you hear that, uh, you know that the, the, the change on the defensive staff, regardless of, of how it, it, it manifests itself scheme-wise, you know the energy and the passion is going to be there because you hear it in Ed Orgeron's voice. What do you think he's learning about his personnel? We touched on his personnel a little bit. He was really all positive, which we expected him to be on air today. Um, and really, it's only the third week of spring practice that they start this afternoon at 4 o'clock over at the Ponderosa. But from what we've seen in his limited time out there, what do you think he's learned about the guys up front? I think he knows what he has in his defensive tackles. Uh, you know, Davin Gotcha is a guy he raves about. He knows that Christian Lacator is a very strong uh, interior player. Um, and he, you can also hear, you know, he, he, when, when you ask him about guys developing, Frank Heron and uh, Lala, Trey Lala is the, uh, the the guys that he mentioned. So I think he knows what he has as his defensive tackle position. Uh, he loves Lewis Neal at yeah. defensive end. And, uh, you know, it, it's now become a situation where who's the other guy that's going to step up and win that other defensive end position? And then can those guys continue to compete and drive up the level of performance? We talked a lot about Jordan Mickey and Jarrell Martin today. They've had a pending decision on what they'll do with their final years of eligibility. They'll come back or, or leave before their junior season. Um, Johnny Jones to meet with the press tomorrow for a little postseason wrap-up. I'd imagine that the, a lot of the conversation outside of the overall team view of the season and going into the offseason will we'll center around his two sophomore studs. Yeah, I would think that that's going to be a very popular topic there. Um, you know, Looking towards the future is going to be something that he's going to talk about a lot more than I would think that it would be a, uh, you know, kind of the, the regular end-of-the-season postmortem. Martin and Mickey, we expect those guys to declare – for the draft, but not close the, the door. In, in other words, continue to amass information, find out you know the best possible scenarios for them, similar to what Johnny O'Brien did after his uh, sophomore season. And I think that when you look at where these guys are projected, um, there, there, there's going to be some wiggle room here. I don't, I don't necessarily think either one of them is going to get information that says hard and fast, you're a first-round pick or you're a second-round pick or you're not going to get drafted. I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, even the people that we talk to, there's a lot of different uh, conflicting opinions about those guys. So at the, to this point in time, I think that, uh, you know, both of those guys need to spend some time thinking about if they want to be college basketball players. And if they do want to be college basketball players, then following up with that, uh, you know, talking with people I talked to yesterday, um, Mark, Jarrell Martin went to class, which is something that, you know, some people that I had talked to a couple of weeks ago said that they thought that as soon as the season was over, what he was going to make his mind up to leave. So by him going to class yesterday, it means he still hasn't closed the door on this. And I think that's a good positive first step. Will Davis stopped by in his regular segment, 8.30 on Tuesday mornings, previewing the matchup tonight between LSU and Tulane. A lot of the storyline has been centered around Andy Canizero, first-year hitting coach and recruiting coordinator with the Tigers, and probably the best – baseball player in Tulane's program's history. Uh, if not, he's in the discussion as being that, traveling back down to Church and Stadium tonight for a 6.30 first pitch that uh, you can catch on Eagle 98.1. Yeah, I know a lot of LSU fans, the, they, they may not remember how familiar they are with David Pierce, the head coach at Tulane, but when he was here a couple of years ago, uh, a, a Friday, a, a, a Second game of the, of, a, of the regional, they played Sam Houston State. He came in. His team was was able to go out there. Was it Sam Houston uh, – Bearcats, right? Right. Yeah, uh, I get, Austin, I get, I get them that, and Stephen F. Austin confused. Got Nola down. Like yeah, five one in the first. But it wasn't the Lumberjacks; it was the Bearcats with a K. Uh, he got, yeah, exactly. That was the game he got Nola down. So his team's always been a team that's been, you know, they, they've 
he ha- he's a very good coach, a really good quality young coach that works on with his pitchers. They got a good pitching staff, but their guys have been able to hit really well this year. So I think that when you look at uh, this team that, two, that the, in Tulane that LSU is playing down at Turchin Stadium tonight, it's gonna be a good matchup. Chambra back in the lineup here for Game Three of uh, three games start now here for him coming off the weekend series out of Fayetteville. Yeah, and you know it's one of those things where they they played the hunch over the weekend. They 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 made the change there and. Uh, I think I, I expect some more of that playing the playing their hunches there. It's one of the things that Maneri and, and, and Canizero, uh, maybe it's just the Italian in them. Uh, you know, you, you you go what you got. Podcast available, 1045ESPN.com. Check it there on demand. We're on Twitter at 1045ESPN. You can check out uh, Collada and the Prince weekday morning, 7 to 9 a.m. on the Capital City's leader in sports talk, 1045 and 1049 ESPN Baton Rouge.